Week one against Cleveland. Cleveland's roster is obviously one of the best in the league. I'm not sure there's, there's many holes. Uh, you know, I think they took care of the back end of their defense uh, this offseason. So there's not very many holes in this Cleveland defense. Uh, you know, talk about what you expect from that game because obviously that's, that's a nice test for a, a team that we're hoping is in the Super Bowl at the end of the season. You look around all of the matchups in week one and the kickoff weekend, this looks like it's number one. If not, it's the top two or three. You've got a team that lost a divisional playoff game that thought they should have won it because they knocked Mahomes out of the game. And then Chad Henney rescues the day. Uh, but now Cleveland thinks they're better. They did an excellent job. They got JOK in the draft. I'm a Northwestern fan. So Trevor Kent fans out there in Pitt High. Uh, but they got Greg Newsom as a number one draft pick at corner. So their talent in the secondary with what they've already had, they've got pass rushers. When you look at Miles Garrett, I know he's got some help, just check it out, that this is a team that's loaded. I think they'll win the AFC North. But to put these two teams together is like having two high school playoff teams meet in week one. Uh, last question I have for you. We've talked a lot about uh, some of the offensive guys. Defensive-wise, obviously that's, that's important, Tom. What do you think will be the biggest surprise uh, and what will stand out about this Chiefs defense? I'm so glad you asked that question because, honestly, I'm as excited about the defense as I am about the offensive changes. We all love offense because that's how we play <laughs> fantasy football. But defensively, this is a team that has made great strides in Super Bowl 55. Steve Spagnuolo is as creative as Andy Reid is on offense. Spags is that way on defense. Now, it started with getting Jaron Reid from the Seahawks. That dude is an absolute rock in the middle. That's where you set your compass. From there, he's like the nucleus of an atom, and then you got protrons and neutrons. Well, the biggest protron is Chris Jones, who's now moving around. It's not just like he's setting as a three technique. He's outside left, he's outside right, he's middle, he's inside right. Uh, that plus the second-year defenders – what I have seen is a dramatic improvement of the second-year defenders. That includes Willie Gay Jr., hopefully he gets over this injury. But then you look at guys like Mike Dana, not, not as well-known. You'll know him by October. Uh, Turk Wharton out of Missouri S&T, right? There's some minor fans out there somewhere in the Ford State area who's had one NFL player in your history, and it's him. But he is, you're going to know who he is in October or November. Uh, but the improvement there, I think Legereus Sneed, will be the, when it's all said and done, will be the best slot corner in the NFL come January. So these second year defenders, at the least, look like winning contributors. At the best, they look like budding stars. That, with Spags' new schemes, you're going to see as much improvement, improvement on defense as you will on offense. I lied. I'm going to ask you one more question because um, obviously the, this team has high expectations. And, you know, I've thought about the season, you know. It's hard for me to imagine a scenario where this team, you know, isn't in the Super Bowl, honestly. Uh, how, do you, how do you deal with that, that pressure, uh, you know, as a football team, knowing that, you know, you've been there, you know, a lot lately? You know, how do you deal with the expectations of, you know, we should be there. We feel like we should be there. Well, there's no arrogance with these guys. That's where I think it starts. If, you, if you're one of those programs, and we've seen it in this area with high school teams, college teams, um, but with the Chiefs now, nobody's been better in this league. They're 39-9 and nine the last 48 games in the regular season. That's number one in the league. Three straight AFC championship games, two straight AFC titles, two straight Super Bowls. Only four teams in NFL history have gone to a Super Bowl three consecutive years, and only one's done it in the last 40 years. That's going to be the focus of my first minute with Mitch. And then how do you get there? Um, but in this instance, there is no sense. First of all, you're not arrogant. Uh, two, you stay humble and on purpose and online. And that's what these guys have done. Uh, so they almost welcome it. Uh, they know that teams, what's interesting, you can look back at this over the last couple of years. Look at what a team does the week after they play the Chiefs. Here's why. They load up all the cannon with canister. And it takes so much to prepare for the Chiefs. You've got to prepare for so much on offense and defense now with Spags' defensive packages that you just throw your whole body <laughs> into it and then you have nothing left for the following week. If you want to bet on a team, bet on a team that's playing the team that played the Chiefs the week before. <laughs> but the Chiefs are now kind of used to it. It's not arrogant. It's just what they have. They're, they're, they're ready for it. And they, uh, they welcome it. Uh, and it's, they relish it, really. And so uh, it's just a really unique team uh, where you've got some of the best stars at their positions all time in NFL history with a Hall of Fame coach like Andy Reid. And yet they're like, let's go. Bring it on. But again, it's not arrogant. I, I, I want to ask you about this too, because you, you, you talk about that. They do have they do have stars all over the place. They, you know, they have Andy Reid, Patrick. You, you, everybody knows the stars. These on are this Pro team. Football Hall of Famers, right? Yeah. But at, at the same time, it feels like 
it's such a quiet organization. It feels like there's, there's, no, there's not really any nonsense and, and there's not a bunch of noise around. How does that happen when you have such good players, such stars, Hall of Fame players right now, Super Bowl favorites uh, you know, to get there? How, how is this organization so quiet? I asked Andy to read the same thing at the dorm in St. Joe. Truthfully, we had the same discussion because he's been a head coach now since 1999 in this league and he was with the Packers in the decade of the 90s. And the Packers of the 90s, if you go back and look at Mike Holmgren's team, I mean, Favre was, you know, larger than life kind of, but that, that Packers team was kind of like this group. Um, I'm not sure how, I, I think a lot of it is you, you recruit that, uh, you draft to that, uh, but you also morph to that. And your interior culture, which we hear a lot in business and sports, you're going, okay, blah, blah, culture. No, the Chiefs really have it. Uh, and when Andy talks about, you know, create energy, uh, respect everything, fear nothing, and eliminate distractions, the, the guys live to that. But when your stars are your hardest workers, nobody works harder than Mahomes or Kelsey. Kelsey's just killed it the last three years. Then it permeates throughout your entire team. And they also know that if you're going to be a mule or a jackass off the field, that just throws the train off the track. So these guys have got it figured out. And it's easy to take it for granted. You're going to sit there with your grandkids someday, and they're going to go, Grandpa, tell me about those days of the Chiefs when they were the best team in the NFL. That's, the, that's what we're living right now, and that's why it's so exciting. 17-game schedule make any difference in what they do or uh, none whatsoever? This team has been grinding for three years. They've actually played three and a half seasons in three years. That was going back to my snap count on Kelsey at 3,400 snaps. Well, the cheat is right around 3,000 snaps. So you... Andy Reid prepares for that and plays to it. Uh, it's a phenomenal question. In January, in February, in March, in April. It's part of your off-season program. It's part of your nutrition. He has, I'm gonna, I'll do a minute with Mitch on this, because he has a method that was used in the 18th century in military training called the Farclick method. And you're going, what are you talking about? You're crazy. No, it's a military training where you push, push, push harder than you've ever pushed. Then you go medium and then you rest. It's almost like a marathon runner uh, getting ready to run the Chicago Marathon or the New York Marathon. That's the way Andy Reid prepares these guys. It is all calculated. Nothing is by chance. And so to prepare for a 17th game doesn't feel like any different because they've been preparing for this ever since Andy Reid ro rolled into town. That's where he's brilliant. I always say there's no wasted days with him. But that includes off-season training, nutrition, uh, whoever you use as your own trainer, as well as the Chiefs' infrastructure, which is outstanding with athletic training and strength and conditioning as good as there is in the league.